Hey traders, this is Ron. Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys had a fantastic day. As always, everything in this presentation is for educational purposes only. We'll kick off here with the SPY. I got some questions on, hey, the market looks a little toppy here. Could last December repeat itself? And then at the same time, you know, what about the Fed's announcement today that there's no rate hikes, apparently insinuating no rate hikes till 2021? I get that folks are timid about the market being at all-time highs. Personally, I think we go way higher. doesn't mean we can't have a vicious correction or something like that in the interim, maybe like last December, but I still think we go higher. I don't think the game is up quite yet. But regardless of that, whether it's my opinion or yours, what would be those telltale signs? What would be the canary in the coal mine? Two things. If you go back to last December, over here on the bottom left of the chart, you can see, look how the volume just went nuts, spiked super high, and the price came down. That's what we're going to look for. At this stage, December now, upper right versus December a year ago, we're above moving averages. Here we weren't. The sell-off last year actually began in October. You can see we came down, we bounced, 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 and then the rug was pulled out, right? And typically, the markets are bullish from the last week of October into December 15th. We're approaching that day right now. But the last two weeks of December are not bearish. They're just flat basically just sideways, no, met, no net positive move. And then January comes, it's off to the races historically. So as we sit here right now, what's going to be that next shoe? I have no idea. It could be impeachment. It could be this. It could be that. It could be tariffs. It could be, they're talking about the repo crisis. If you read Zero Hedge like I do, you know, this is coming to a head at some point, potentially. The point is something could be out there. I have no idea when it's going to happen. What will be the telltale signs? Spike in volume, closing typically at the lows of the day, breaking moving averages. That is when we get concerned. So I'm just going to say that again because I talked about it a few days ago. Same thing. Do I think this year is going to play out like last December? Historically, no, because the market's just basically flat. But if it does, we know what to watch for. So we just take it day by day. If we take a look at the diamonds, DIA, they're sitting up there almost at new all time highs as well. They were only up about 38 cents today. We take a look at the Qs. They were up nicely, about a half percent, almost average volume. Take a look at SMH, the semiconductors. We just spent the last month and a half or so going nowhere after a nice rip, right? From October, right into the beginning of uh, November, sideways. And now we just launched ourselves on above average volume. Today's was 4.8 million shares. Average volume is about 3.8 million shares. So we obliterated it by almost a million shares. This is good for the overall market. If you're a bull, if you're a bear, you got to be shaking your head saying, what does it take? <laughs> More selling. Bulls have the edge. And the semis are making it look really easy right now. Gang, I sent an email out yesterday about the top 10 stocks for the rest of the year, the last three weeks of this year, and to kick off the new year. Half the seats are now gone from one email and this video. That is becoming the norm. I have no doubt we're going to max out capacity probably at some point, maybe tomorrow, already on Thursday. I'm going to go live Friday, this Friday, the 13th, 12 p.m., 9 a.m. Pacific, so 12 Eastern, 9 Pacific. In the first five minutes, I will show you the hottest stocks for the years ahead. I'll show you how, you, how we could spot Disney, how we can spot Pod. I'm going to show you the stock that's been seven for seven the last um, seven years. It has a perfect track record. Overall, it has about an 80, I think it was 86% track record starting at the end of this month. You need to know what that stock is. So instead of, I say guessing because at the end of the day, that's what we're doing as traders. Usually we do a lot of homework. We try to figure out which one might move higher or lower, and then we hope we're right. I'm going to bring you the proof, the facts that show which stocks to get pushed higher. So I'm going to send you guys home with your own copy of the hot list, if you will. So please register at the bottom of the video or in the email, but you can't afford to miss it, literally. No guessing. We're going to know exactly who to watch for. We're going to grab the popcorn, sit back, and enjoy. So I look forward to seeing you guys there. All right, now let's take a look at some other stocks. I had a question on the Home Depot. Home Depot had a really nice rally over the past year, pretty much from the December bottom a year ago when the market crashed. This sort of is stair-stepping higher. You see it? Step up, step down, step up, step down. You get the idea. Well, once we blew through that 50-day on volume, and the earnings was not good, we're coming down. What we would do at this stage, now you go to the stair steps, the bottom, the reversal points where the bears thought they had something going, the bulls came in and said, not so fast, bears, and they pushed it higher. These are pivots, these are swings. 
So right around there, I'm just gonna round it off to 200, round it off to about 190, then 180, and then down here. Right now we're at 212. So if we go from 212 down into this area, 210, that's about 10 bucks lower, 5% or so. Then it's all the way down to 190. That's another 10 lower. You get the idea. But bears are definitely in charge of Home Depot. And here is OLOI. Good stuff, cheap. This is Ollie's. Ollie's had a nice gap up, but geez, back in August, big gap down. Earnings, now we're gapping up. We've cleared these previous highs. That puts the gap fill at the target around 76, $77. That's 10% higher. Not bad. I would use today's intraday low as a potential end of day to go in the stock. I had a question on stocks that have big gap down, like Sage did, big move down, and there's a rebound. What, what can be done? All right, if I zoom out here on Sage, you can see this thing moves around quite a bit. For some reason, 60 seems to be a bottom, and 185, one, I'm sorry, 190 seems to be a top. Man alive, right? A lot of back and forth, roller coaster ride. Well, with this particular company, Sage, stock was at 150, then it goes down to 60. That's a bad day. Here's how I would potentially approach it and practice this on paper. When we have this little gap up, that's strong when you gap. So the close, I'm gonna move over that candle, was 6018. We opened the next day around, I can't quite see it, it looks like 66 or something. That gap up is a good sign. I could have gotten in there, and then the stop is the previous day's intraday low. Okay, well now it's going sideways. Now we gap up again. The immediate target once we start moving higher is the previous top to bottom of the candle, the entire range. That intraday range, the high there is 72.71. So the moment we gapped up here, 72.71 was the target. Now we're at 68. If I still wanted to watch this one, the moment we close above 71.72, the next technical target is 150-ish. Not saying it's gonna get there. No way to know if it ever will. It could take days, years, or never. But here's what I would do. From the gap up to the top of the candle, we've already had a big part of that move. I now wait for it to get above that candle at 72.71, close above it, and then I would put the stop either below that candle, once we get above there, if it, get up, if it gets above there, or the stop would be down here at the absolute low. That's gonna be a big range over $10. So if we can get a little further move higher here, the moment we get above it, then the intraday low of that candle that closed above, this big move down move would be the stop. I hope that's clear. Practice on paper. And then, um, oh, one other thing here too. The 20 day EMA is so far away here in red up at 115, nearly double the price of the stock. As this stock just simply time passes, this line will eventually get itself down here. And then that would be a resistance target. And we get above that, it would also be a trailing stop. If I had to pick something super short term, I mean, even a five day exponential moving average or an eight day, it's not gonna be overly helpful yet because there was such a big move. We've only had basically five days since of price action. And then here's another one to keep an eye on. This one's pump. If I bring it in, this stock was above 24 bucks back in April. It was down at eight, not bad. Now we're starting to push higher and we're stair-stepping. The upside targets for pump, you would just go to previous highs, 12, then this little gap area, maybe 12 and a half, and then to fill the gap up towards 16. The only thing lacking here is I don't like the lack of volume on up days. Black days are when the stock finished higher, red or when the stock finished lower, but I do like the way it's acting. Comes up, pauses, up, pauses, up, and now you know the target's technically 10, up towards 12, and then back up here towards where the, the open was on that gap, 1276. So that's it. Again, make sure, register ASAP, grab your seat before we hit max capacity. I'm going to show you the hottest stocks for the year end. All within the first five minutes of going live, I will tell you what to watch for. You'll leave this event with these powerful trade ideas in your pocket. Not based on some opinion, but hard, cold facts, the proven data. And that's what separates the guessing from the reality of what these stocks have done. And this is what the big money does this time of year. We are in one of the best, we're coming into, we're leaving, I would argue the second best trading time of the year, which is October, end of October into mid-December. The next one, the best of the entire year, is about to happen. And you wanna know who those stocks are. I think it can make the difference from a so-so year into an amazing year. So again, happy holidays. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take good care.